one story that I <clears throat> kind of wanted to share, um, yeah, I live a few blocks away from Steve Jobs, so uh, I'm not sure how many of you guys actually use this Apple II. Did any of you guys? Oh, nice, <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, I think one of the, uh, one of the interesting things um, about this um, computer was that it was one of the first ones to actually have uh, color. And at the time, um, you know, color, there wasn't really any benefit of having color um, compared to black and white and some of the shades uh, that you could accomplish with just the black and white and shading. Um, but more and more businesses continued to, you know, to order this Apple II, uh, you know, despite any real scientific reason that color really made a difference. Um, so I think the insight there is that there really was an emotional response to color. And when you look at, when you, when you look back at this, you're like, of course we should have color on our computers. It's almost silly to think why we wouldn't have color. But at the time, <laughs> it was something new and, and something that people didn't do before. So just wanted to highlight that sometimes, you know, we have these emotional responses to these artifacts, and color can be one example. And one of the um, founding designers of Frog, who also worked on the Apple II, um, I like this quote that form follows emotion. I think it's important that you know form follows function, and we think a lot about um, behaviors first and foremost. But um, particularly in healthcare, where I think it's quite a mature market, um, in many in many cases, um, focusing on emotion is is an important area that we should. Um, reflect upon. And I think one of the key things is that um, we really wouldn't be able to make decisions without uh, our emotion. Um, emotions, what's driving our everyday judgments of things, it's helping us decide what to eat, how to sleep, where to go. Um, there's a famous uh, guy, Antonio Damasio, did some early work uh, studying patients who are perfectly normal but um, you know, were brain impaired in one emotional you know, part of their brain, and they weren't able to <laughs> really function in society. They couldn't make decisions. Um, so I think this, this point really, uh, not only does it you know, uh, resurface some of uh, William James' old stuff back in the 1800s, but it actually you know, points out that, you know, I, I don't know if it's in science or an engineer, and I'm also an engineer, uh, just trained to think that like, logic and reason is the only thing that's, um, that's the center of our decision-making process. But I really think that um, emotion is something that we should revisit. It's been around for years. Lots of other designers have talked about it. But I think it's important to, to bring this discussion back up in this year. So I think of sort of emotion as central to um, how we make a decision, the behavior that we um, you know, decide to do. And then it, it, our experiences are, you can think of them as a, a series of a, a behaviors stitched together whether you're actually experiencing them or, or imagining them, and then they ultimately influence your memory. So I think this infinite loop um, that happens in our everyday life, emotion is really core and, and central to it. And so I kind of want to talk about a couple ways as designers that maybe we can start to focus in and hone um, how we elicit behavioral responses. So um, how many of you guys have read um, Don Norman's book, Designing for Emotion? Cool, sweet. So you got to so, so you guys should be familiar with this. I think he proposes a pretty um, simple uh, framework here. If there's any doctors here, I don't want to get in, get in trouble. But essentially, he breaks down um, sort of how to target um, emotion through visceral behavior and reflective layers. So visceral level is kind of like our immediate response to things, um, a lot of stuff that's pre-wired uh, and, um, you know, that it's kind of evolved from, from our uh, animal-like uh, vestiges. The behavioral level is kind of a lot of the emotion that drives our everyday um, behavior and the reflective level is a little bit what our past speaker spoke about, things like reassurance and hope and identity and belongingness. Um, when you can think back on an emotional experience, um, that's sort of the reflective layer. So I think one way that we can think about um, design is this, this visceral layer, which has a lot to do with attraction. So I try to go back and think about some um, experiences, some health-related uh, ways that we could um, improve how we, uh, again, target visceral design. I'm not sure how many of you guys are familiar with um, the United Colors of Benton uh, campaigns. I think this is a fantastic uh, piece, and uh, really it stops you, right? I mean, I think it attracts you, it catches your eye. Um, it's something that you know, drives traffic into their stores. Uh, I think they've turned over a couple billion dollars of 
in, in revenue across maybe like 6,000 stores. Um, but the point being that they've been able to do some pretty <laughs> radical uh, things. And, and I'm not sure in your guys' cases, in the applications or the hospitals that, that you may be at, um, how might we use, um, how might we target sort of these visceral reactions in more effective ways? So, um, you know, another example here, of sort of a baby someone mentioned earlier that I think uh, having a baby is one of the only happy experiences they have in hospitals sometimes. But again, how, how can we um, create graphics? How can we create um, media um, that really elicits some sort of uh, response? Um, and so, you know, I challenge you to take some risk, <laughs> uh, you know, do something different. Um, because ultimately, again, that's going to get, that's going to make an impression on the people that you're serving. It's going to drive, uh, again, how they make a decision, their whole experience and their memory process. And that cycle will repeat again. I think this is one of the most um, successful um, anti-drug campaigns. How many of you guys are familiar with the Montana meth project? One? Yeah, well, I, I, I definitely highlight, um, I definitely recommend checking this out. Uh, there have been some amazing both print and uh, video campaigns. But again, I mean, some of the stuff on here just shocks you. You know, you put this in front of a, a kid and <laughs> I don't think he wants to go near a uh, mess. So uh, in this case, maybe targeting uh, fear, disgust. Uh, again, this visceral reaction that it kind of, I can feel in my belly. And then you think about sort of, um, you know, last time I was in the, the doctor's uh, office, you know, the brochures that are sort of laid out in the, in the room while I'm waiting, and you're like, you know, do I want to go and pick up one of those? You know, do I want to interact with one of those? Um, and I, definitely not. So I think there's, along the whole touch points in our, in, our, um, in our health experience, we can think about ways to, again, viscerally uh, elicit some sort of response. Um, you know, I've seen artwork in uh, hospitals, and Stanford in particular, they have some amazing stuff in the Children's Hospital. Um, but I think there's, again, more opportunities there that we can, you know, uh, grab people's attention and hopefully start guide them to making um, better decisions. Um, I love this uh, example from Wee Sprout. Uh, this sort of uh, hit the landing page and I just get a surprise from this cute little baby. So again, another example of um, how you can use Im imagery in an effective way uh, to grab people's attention. So, you know, the question asked for you guys is, in your designs, in your work, um, how can you, again, explicitly target these sort of visceral reactions through uh, the shape, through the color, through the form, um, through imagery? Um, many of the examples I presented, I hope that you can find some ways to um, do that in your designs. And the other layer that Don Norman mentioned is sort of this behavioral layer, um, which is all about um, the use of the actual product or service. So this could be, you know, a lot of people I think talk about usability. This could be, you know, uh, its performance, uh, its understandability. Um, and I think one of the, the classic examples here is this uh, Mercedes-Benz uh, um, uh, seat controller. Uh, it's a beautiful example of, you know, a clear mental model that this person uh, has when they engage with this. It's really simple to use. I think there's a mantra, you know, uh, tr um, uh, learn once, remember forever. So, I mean, after interacting with this, there's, of course, you're going to know how to use it. So I think the more that we can strive uh, for simplicity and strive for um, um, a behavioral pleasure um, like this, uh, I think the more the better. Uh, how many of you guys are familiar with this glow cap? Tauti, David Rose. Yeah, I mean, another great example. I mean, even just the, the shape, the physicality of this example. I mean, if you felt it before, I mean, it feels a lot different than when you uh, uh, undo sort of a lot of pills and medicine today, right? It's almost like a struggle to open up the medicines. Like, they don't want you to open up the medicine. Uh, in this case, you know, not only do you have uh, physicality to it, but you have um, a sense of color. You have, a, again, another signal for... Um, to, to, to draw emotional connection with the user. Um, how many of you guys use the up? I mean, not the up, uh, the uh, Nike Plus? That's my next example. Nike Plus? Cool. Uh, yeah, again, I, I think what's really interesting here from a behavioral standpoint is, again, they're riding an existing trend. People are already going out with their iPods. 
Um, they're already uh, doing this, so they just attach an additional sensor to it. Um, I think some of the running clubs at, at Stanford, again, also uh, reinforce this sort of social mechanism here. And I think uh, the up, uh, how many of you guys actually tried using the up? Does any of you guys still have it on? It's still, <laughs> I still have a lot of hope for, for the up. Um, but I wanted to highlight sort of, uh, again, the feeling, the, the, um, the behavioral use of it. I mean, the fact that it was on you, you had some people wearing it like jewelry. Um, there's, again, ways to uh, create that sort of connection um, from a behavioral standpoint that I think um, Jawbone did a great job with. Um, it's unfortunate that the had to do the recall. Um, this is sort of some of the stuff that's still in medicine today. I mean, I have to, if I have a diabetes patient, I have to flip through all this information and try to make sense of this, this big matrix. So, you know, the eatery, which I, I look forward to hear more about, is another example of, um, you know, through my existing behavior that I'm already doing, taking pictures of food, sharing things with my friends, how can I get sort of more feedback, especially if I'm a, a diabetic? Um, Another examples that I've been looking for in health, um, I'm not sure when's the last time any of you guys have been in a, in a hospital room, but um, you know, how do you create a, a room such that you know, it invites people inside, it invites family members, it's somewhere warm, it's somewhere, so if you see some of the wood and the couches in here that I think are a lot different than the most hospital rooms. So again, uh, how can, through the actual use of uh, the product or service, how can we elicit some sort of um, meaningful emotional response? I think other examples, and particularly in the service um, industries, come up like Zappos or Nordstrom or uh, the Ritz-Carlton or other places like that. I definitely encourage you to um, take a look and explore how they generate some sort of emotional response through the use of their product. So again, what you saw there is uh, in those examples where you saw you know, clear mental models, you saw uh, uh, leveraging existing behaviors, uh, you saw the use of uh, space um, in interesting ways. So again, I challenge you guys to think about ways that um, you can elicit emotions through the actual use of your product. And one way that I think about um, actually doing this is um, in the same way that you'd actually engage with another person. So, a lot of people talk about designing for emotion, for instance, Aaron Walter in his recent book, um, that designing for emotion is all about creating a, a human to human connection. So I studied human computer interaction uh, at Stanford, but now more and more I'm trying to focus my attention even more on just human to human interaction and the technology, uh, as the previous speaker said, is um, becoming more invisible. So, you know, in your product, your service, pretend that you know, it's a, it's a person. Pretend that you pro anthropomorphize um, your product and, and walk through a whole emotional arc. Um, you can think of it in terms of storytelling or you can think of it in terms uh, of a movie, uh, but map out um, the anticipated, uh, the experience and the remembered emotions that you want to elicit. And, you know, one example of this is, um, how many of you guys are familiar with uh, color scripts? Nice. I'm back. So this is like, um, the entire Incredibles uh, movie uh, laid out um, in, in primarily the use of color. And you can see uh, if you have a close up, they actually published a book recently about it. Um, you can see the stark contrast used between scenes. Um, and so in the same way, perhaps in your product or service, um, you can tie together what is the emotional responses um, throughout the use of your product. So instead of just thinking about um, sort of conversion funnels or just metrics or your bottom line, also remember um, the emotional responses that you're listening along the way. So I think the takeaways that I want to point out today are just starting with the, the behavioral goal that you have. Again, emotions play a key role in uh, making decisions. Uh, map out sort of this emotional arc that you have and find a way to target uh, specific find a way to target specific uh, emotions along this arc or along this pathway that you're laying out in your product or service. 